Hello and welcome to this one-off episode of uh, Let's Play Command Modern Air Naval Operations. Now eventually I would like to do a full Let's Play, but this is actually specifically a scenario that uh, I came up with my co-worker. Now my co-worker, um, in the late 60s, early 70s, he served with the Army as uh, part of a Pershing missile detachment in Germany. And, you know... I mentioned to him, would you like to see what your missiles could have done against an actual Soviet armored push through the Volta Gap? And he said, sure. So now we are here we are three months later, and I finally got around to it. So what we have here is just for our setup is uh, east of Stuttgart in this town of Swedish Gmund. I think I'm saying that right, or about right. We have the 56 Field Artillery Brigade, I think it would have been. And now each of these are going to be... Uh, a Pershing missile firing unit. So per the database, uh, let's see. I uh, just that's just our weapon. Uh, here we go. We see each of these icons for those who can't read the NATO symbology is three Pershing missile launchers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. We have eleven. So that gives us about thirty-three units. I think in reality they use 32, I want to say, but all these are approximate as there's um, there's set units that I'm working with here. So that will be representing my co-worker's unit. I don't know if he actually served in that unit specifically, but now up here we can see I already started to lay out um, actually let's just switch to the Soviets the Soviets for a second and now for again for those who can't read the Soviet uh, or sorry the NATO symbology each of these icons represents a tank and in this case per the database each one is an armored platoon of T-55 tanks and there's four tanks per this icon or platoon so you have about 4, 8, 12, 16, so about 32 for uh, I think this was a brigade level armored unit here and per this is roughly representative of the first soviet armored guards so you had um i think it was three brigades of armored units and a regiment of motorized infantry which is that's what these uh m these boxes with m's each of those is um let's go and look here each of those is a motor rifle platoon representing three BTR-60 PBs filled with soldiers. So you had three of these brigades and then a brigade of motorized rifle infantry for, I think that was one battalion, something like that. I, I forget. I did this all last night during um, some downtime I had while playing a game of Starfinder with friends. But basically we have... Uh, about three armored battalions, each of which are three brigades of armored units and a brigade of motorized infantry, and then another three brigades or three battalions of motorized infantry. Technically, it's supposed to be mechanized, but I just subbed in the BTR 60 since it's easier, as well as another brigade of armored units. So we see in our formation here, we have all the armored units up front with the couple in the middle here. And then we have a second line composed mainly of our motorized slash mechanized uh, units with the uh, BTR-60s. And then we have a third line here, which um, each of these battalions also has a brigade level support unit of uh, artillery. And here we, uh, we're using an artillery battery of the uh, 2S3 M1973 to represent that. And then on top of that, we have dispersed throughout here um, some SA-6 SAM battalions. I don't know if that's actually a battalion, but each of these is, um, per the database, we have, yeah, we have four SA-6 gainful launchers plus a straight flush radar vehicle. So that's five units. Okay, so it is battalion. And we have a couple of those spread out. And this is supposed to be roughly representative of a Soviet armored unit. And you can see I have a moving 
They're positioned northeast of Stuttgart, roughly where the fall of the gap is. I mean, I think we're way too far spread out for that, but but they're, you can see they're heading south towards Stuttgart. And um, so, you know, obviously we aren't modeling everything. Like there'd be uh, like an engineer support company with this. I, I couldn't find anything about uh, mobile AAA that would have accompanied them. And I know there's a few other support units, but, and then just so, because we're not a bunch of big meanies, uh, I had put in a couple of Neptune surveillance aircraft uh, with the idea that they would spot these guys, and they did, but they couldn't identify them. I also have some EB-66 destroyers here. Uh, they're just jamming there to jam the missile system so they don't shoot down my surveillance. And, you know, they spotted a big bunch of mobile contacts, as you can see, but they couldn't identify them. So that's when I sent in these RF-101 Voodoo's. Uh, so they could get some low-level photography and actually identify that yes, we're facing Soviet a Soviet armored division. So now What we're going to do is now that we have confirmation that yes, this is a big Soviet armored push and not just a random parade we're going to uh, Have everyone GTFO so we're going to have him throttle max altitude afterburner. Uh, you were going to plot a course away from what's going to be multiple nuclear explosions. Max altitude afterburner. And honestly, you'd probably want to almost go low altitude so you can put uh, mountains between you and the EMP, but we'll have these guys get out of there at military thrust since they don't have afterburners. So we'll do that and that. And I got this guy down here, so we'll have him. We'll just have him boogie out that way, because you will want to be going the same direction that we'll be launching our missiles. Since these guys are moving south, our missiles are probably going to hit closer to down there. And they're, um, I think they're set to go at 30, about 28 knots for the group, more or less. Okay, so we have everyone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select... We're going to start the scenario, so you can see we're going at, uh, you can see everything's moving now. So we're going to do a manual attack on this chunk. Unit is not authorized to use we nuclear weapons. Well, we can fix that. Permission to use nuclear weapons has been granted. Reset affected units. So now if we go and do another manual target setup. Ah. So we gotta go back to the doctrine. Weapons free. So, now we should be able So now we got to wait for the OODA loop limitation. So uh So these are our attacking units, so what we'll do here is we'll add all these targets, whoops, let's try this again, 
It's been a long time since I've done this, so. So we have all you guys, and then we have all of you guys. So add select targets, and hopefully, this works right. I have no idea if it's going to. So let's, I want to view, um, ah, here, map settings. There we go. So I, what I did was I just turned on targeting vectors and basically it's showing, yes, they're targeting everyone and doing an ungodly amount of slowing down. So now these guys should be ready to launch. Ah, there they go. So we see that, uh, now these are Pershing 1As. I don't know the Pershing ones were fielded. I didn't do enough research on that, but I couldn't find the act, the Pershing 1 in the command database, and I am using the Cold War database rather than the uh, DB3000 database. So we can see this guy, he's got a foreign kill to nuclear warhead, and he set, uh, he went toward armor 103 it looks like. So let's set another one towards, uh, it looks like they're only launching one. So let's have another one target mobile 17. I guess we'll just do manual launches since this will let us target a bit more accurately, mobile 17. Another five seconds, four, 1,003, 1,002, 1,000. Okay, it sounds like everyone else is just launching anyway, so. And unfortunately, they're all launching against the... Oh, okay, we got a couple. So, we're going to speed up time. And unfortunately, they're only engaging the left side. I was hoping to spread the nukes out a little more. But who knows, maybe they won't be as effective as what we thought. And I can always quickly replicate that guy and engage the right side too. So we had this guy who got off early. And actually for the purposes of this, I'm going to quickly enable the God's Eye View. And you can see how quickly, I mean granted we're at 5x compression, but it's not taking very long. I mean we're only... These are only about 100, 150 miles away. And... Wow, they just dropped a nuke on every unit. The spacing between these, by the way, is about a mile. One to five miles between the various units. So let's slow back down to one second. We can see now they're probably at the re-entry portion. They're going at about a Mach 7.6, so hypersonic velocities. Altitude 70 kilometers and falling, so they're basically coming straight down on these guys. So let's speed up time a little more. I don't know how those guys are still jammed when my jammers are facing away, unless they're dual direction jammers, but... And you can see that since they were moving, the, the nukes aren't going to land exactly on where they were supposed to, but that's okay. And that first nuke is at about 80,000 feet now. And he's going at 
Let's see. Where is its speed? Ah, Mach 7. So, slowed down a bit due to, you know, air resistance and the fact that he's not boosting anymore. But he should be hitting any second now. You can see he's going like 3,000 feet per second. That's crazy. 20,000. 15,000. He's going to probably end up hitting right behind this motorized group. Oh, there he goes. Nuke us away. We can see that immediately there has been three contacts that have been lost. You can see these guys are just like, what the fuck? Because now they're going east instead of south. And you can see the explosion is actually still getting bigger. So we have group 189 here, which they're supposed to be mechanized, I think, but. Now, remember what I believe, I don't know if the T-55s and BTR-60s were uh, NBC sealed. I know I believe the T-72 and the, the BMP series units, um, IFEs, were, were NBC sealed, but now we can see the rest of the barrage has, uh, oh, you can see an EMP effect on him there, that was the uh, lightning bolt. But you can see how we're, you know, just the, the detonations are just punching holes in the Soviet armored division here. And now we see uh, this guy is still alive, surprisingly. It, it, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's turn off the God's eye view. So this is what the Americans see currently and uh, all their stuff is operational surprisingly enough so it looks like they're out of the EMP radius so that's good uh, if we switch to the Soviet side we can see if we fast forward a little oh, it's gonna do that a lot so basically as these explosions are getting larger they're enveloping more units in the explosion and keep in mind you know radiation is going to kill whoever doesn't die in the explosion right away you know like for example this guy here probably as you know is going to get some pretty severe radiation poisoning you know these guys way at the other end might live for months maybe these guys probably weeks at the most. So if we fast forward time a little bit. You can see down here in the message log, you know, um, they're suffering blast damage and that's just wrecking them. And it looks like the blast is fading and now, well, a more blast damage and now you can see half a Soviet armored division maybe it's a good thing we concentrated them because we see there's still a couple survivors here um, granted they're gonna be so severely irradiated as to be unusable in like a week I mean I certainly wouldn't want to put remembers in that we can see uh, uh, Where is the group operate? Formation, here we go. So if we go down and look at their individual sensors, oddly enough, their electronics haven't been destroyed by the EMP. I find that surprising. This game does model um, uh, EMP effects, at least to a limited degree for the consumer version, which is what I have. The professional version probably does it much better. But um, it is worth noting, though, that units of this era would have been using vacuum tube electronics, which are significantly more resistant to 
electromagnetic pulse, whereas if we had, say, um, you know, something using um, solid state electronics in here, it, it would be gone. You'd have to replace the whole thing because the EMP would just fry it. Uh, likewise, if we go to these guys here, we see on our Neptune, which has all sorts of electronics, uh, there's no damage. Everything's operational. And they're only, uh, the closest ones are about 30 miles out. So you can see that EMP seemingly didn't travel too far. And to keep in mind, this is one small part of a, uh, okay, of, of the U.S. Nuclear Force stationed in Europe. There are like, I think, at least 10 of these units equivalent so if you had three Soviet armored divisions trying to push through, you know, this is probably more realistically the gap here. You know, and you concentrate, you know, all those units concentrate there and you concentrate your nukes there, you could easily wipe out a couple armored divisions worth and certainly make defending West Germany a lot easier, although at the cost of irradiating a good chunk of uh, West Germany, so. And just... Just in comparison, what we can do here real quick is um, we can show what an ICBM would do in comparison to these MRBMs. Uh, I want facility. So let's use Minuteman 3. Now this guy we can, we're going to have him attack the eastern flank um, <sighs> come on granted free 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 Now we're going to do a uh, bearing only launch. Probably hit there. Target is with him at weapon range. So yeah, I mean, these guys are gonna have much bigger range. We'll fix that. I mean, obviously there weren't minimum three silos in Germany. So we'll put them in Northern Ireland because we can. So we'll set them down to the southern end. And we will fire and hopefully I set that up right. And the only reason I put it so close is just so it gets there faster. You can see though it does travel faster than the uh, then the Pershings, because you can see we're up at like 110 kilometers, we're at Mach 12 and we're still getting faster. So this guy is way in outer space. So actually if we, if this was 3D, you'd see him like somewhere up here coming down. And actually it would be nice if you could get this in 3D. In theory you can, but you have to buy the professional version and I've been too shy to ask for a quote since I imagine it's probably something like $20,000 or, you know, some ridiculous price that your average person won't be able to afford. And on top of that, you know, who knows if they have you doing uh, security checks on you or whatnot, because I don't know how controlled that is, because I do know they work with uh, militaries and defense contractors for that and put all... And, they at least have the ability to put classified information in. Obviously, I don't think it ships by default with it, but it lets you edit it, your own information in. Uh, well, all right, so if we go to God's eye view, we can see now our um, target point is the middle. We're in real time now. You can see it right now it's projected to end up in about the middle. And we're at Mach 8. 17.5 about now. 
lack of boost and air resistance is bringing that down a little bit but so we're going at about a kilometer a second just in altitude difference not to mention you know longitudinal and latitudinal uh, movement here so if we fast forward uh, oh so here you can see the uh, it's got uh, MERVs or multiple independent re-entry vehicles here so you can see that or maybe the silo nope it's a MERV okay so each of these is a 170 kiloton warhead so a bit smaller than those Pershing 1A's but keep in mind these would be spread out at so you'd have like you know with one missile you could basically hit there there and there so these explosions are actually going to be a bit smaller uh, do we have I know the US has bigger warheads than that though uh, let's see Oh, that's not what I want. Uh, ooh, we could use Titan missiles, which were notorious, had a bunch of notorious problems with them. Nine, me nine megaton nuclear warhead. Yeah, three. I think these were arms control limited. Yeah, these, the, L the Minutemen 2 had 1.2 megaton nuclear warheads. So. That was more in mind of what I was thinking. Fine, even though it's doing a a bearing only launch anyways. And yeah, as expected, the 170s were uh Ah, <sighs> jeez, I I know nuclear weapons are supposed to be tightly controlled but come on okay now we can do our bearing only launch we could see that because of the arms controlled treaty had smaller warheads than the Pershing missile so they didn't uh, so they didn't do a whole lot they punched a small hole in it but now, performance-wise, I expect it's going to perform mostly the same. So we'll just wait for the missile to come in, which should come in pretty quickly. There he is. Actually, he's moving slower than I thought. Only Mach 12. Okay. Oop. Moved a bit faster, but now we can see. All right, we hit dead center in their formation, so that actually worked out pretty well. And I believe this was, uh, yeah, 1.2 megaton nuclear warhead. There are probably um, three uh, MERVs with that at least. If we switch to the Soviets here, uh, if we go to formation editor, that's not the key. F4, okay. So if we look at their sensors for the, okay, so those don't have any. Uh, let's look at you. We see for now the same sensors are operational, but I imagine as that blast wave gets closer, we might see sensor damage. I would hope so at least. Because he's only about 10 to 15 miles away from the center of the blast. Of course, granted an EMP isn't going to propagate as well among along ground level as it is in the air since you know there's all sorts of ground clutter that can disrupt it but we can see this warhead's punching a pretty big hole so 
So if we speed up time a little bit here. That actually didn't do as much as I thought it would. For landing dead center in the middle of their formation. They're still going to all have radiation poisoning. And all these vehicles, well, you're going to want to get rid of them. But So there you have it. A concentrated nuclear attack by one missile brigade can wipe out about half of a Soviet armored division. About. And, and that's when it's spread out like this. So if they were passing through a narrow gap, you could potentially wipe out a lot more. So thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.